plan that is uh, a very important component to the planning team. Just real quickly, in creating the planning team, only one new position was created. Uh, four positions were moved from the planning and building department. Two of them were supposed to be devoted only to advanced planning, so that was, that was a wash. And two of them were vacant positions that had not been filled and were not intended to be filled. So just so you know, when creating the planning team, only one new position was in fact created. Um, the contracts administered through the planning team are paid for with funding received from general plan update fees, which are applied to um, various fees that, that when people come in and request permits and, and zoning changes, et cetera. All of the contracts together have totaled approximately $500,000 a year. So that's for general plan, UVAP, uh, farm worker housing survey, and in the past there have been some incidental ones on the housing element. Uh, the staffing and operating expenses of the planning team are paid about 25% from general plan update fees and grant funding, and about 75% from the general fund, uh, or around $300,000. So just so you know kind of the, the uh, financial underpinnings of the uh, planning team. Executive office support is provided at no additional cost, a veritable bargain. So in going to the projects of the planning team, Ukiah Valley Area Plan. We are on the homeward stretch. It's a long stretch, but we're on it. Um, MIG, our MIG, uh, Moore, Isofano, and Goldsman, is the consultant working on drafting the Ukiah Valley Area Plan itself. And they're completing the draft which includes things like defining the new designations for mixed use and developing implementation measures. As you know, you've already seen the goals and, and the, the framework at the, at the beginning. The goal is for the plan to be self-mitigating through these implementation measures as, as it is um, after it's adopted. The bottleneck created by the traffic studies has finally been cleared with assistance from MCOG uh, after adding at least five months to our time frames, and you've heard me mention that before, uh, but that's just the way it is. Um, now we are having to focus on the climate change portion of the report, which is necessitating additional staff work, assistance from air quality, and a contract augmentation for Leonard Charles to subcontract for the work that was unanticipated when we originally contracted with him a year and a half ago. As you know, these climate change requirements are a rather recent addition to the discussion, both for the general plan level as well as for UVAP. And um, while they're not adding a lot of time, they're adding a little bit of time, but they're certainly going to add some to the cost. Not a huge amount, but every little bit just kind of adds on. Right now, uh, preliminary draft sections are being reviewed by the appropriate agencies and planning team staff. We're also building in a third party review of the administrative draft that will be coming to the county first as an additional quality assurance measure. So that's something that in consultation with county council, uh, we felt that it was important. The public hearing at the board level is targeted to July 21st. And then we're working backwards from that date to schedule one or possibly two, likely two, public hearings with the county planning commission and one with the airport land use commission. So there will be two to three hearings even before it gets to the board. And um, our goal at this point is for the public review drafts of the UVAP and the UVAP EIR, because those are two separate documents, and in this case, two separate consultants working on it. Those should be available to the public by the end of May for uh, the mandated um, minimum of 45 day public review period prior to the board public hearing. So that's where we are with the Kaya Valley Area Plan, and we're working towards getting that public review draft able to be released uh, at the end of May. Recently, some questions have surfaced about the Ukiah Valley Area Plan process, and it was suggested that I, I address them here, so I'm going to do that. Um, one of the questions had to do with the decision of the board, supported by the Executive Office, to not convene a Citizens Advisory Council in, for the development of the Ukiah Valley Area Plan. Uh, the thinking was that the CAC, or Citizens Advisory Council method, had been utilized previously in the long history of Ukiah Valley Area Plan. And um, that 
this time around, we wanted to try a different process. And in fact, we wanted to create a more inclusive process, what we hoped would be a more inclusive process that was open to the general community. So the consultants began with a wide array of focus groups, which you might recall, this is going back a year and a half now, uh, drawn from key community members and stakeholders, and extensive notes and input from those uh, were taken and input from those uh, facilitated meetings. And then it was accompanied by an initial open house, two major um, public workshops, and a fourth public reception and review of material to date. There were also two public joint meetings between the city and the county, which I'm sure you recall, and their respective planning commissions. The goal was to have more of the process visible to the general public. And I believe that we were successful in meeting that goal. However, I do want to acknowledge that greater visibility did not necessarily translate into participation by a wider swath of the community. Another question was concerned with the role of the County Planning Commission in the Ukiah Valley Area Plan process and whether the planning team had somehow taken on the role of the Planning Commission. And that one's a bit puzzling because the planning team performs a staff function and the Planning Commission has a uh, decision-making function. And so those are two very different roles. Apparently the Planning Commission did have more meetings devoted to the earlier Ukiah Valley Area Plan drafts. And um, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but I think on some people's part, there was a sense of uh, we already gave um, in, in that process. So we did, there was discussion regarding how intensively the Planning Commission wanted to be involved in this next and last Ukiah Valley Area Plan process, as well as the general plan process, since they're both going on simultaneously. And as it was, the Planning Commission participated in full in the first joint session with the city. And then the Planning Commission established a subcommittee of Nelson, Edwards, and Mosier to attend the subsequent joint uh, session and to attend the public workshops. So in each case, all materials uh, have been shared with the Planning Commission uh, that have gone to the Board of Supervisors. They've had the opportunity to comment at each of the Board of Supervisors sessions that has been devoted to UVAP, and you'll recall that they've been here um, and spoken at the beginning of your deliberations. And um, I also want to say there's been quite a bit of cross-pollination between the Ukiah Valley Area Plan and the General Plan Update, um, for example, in the areas of energy and water policies. A lot of work went into the water policies in the general plan, and those were used then to kind of inform the Ukiah Valley Area Plan as well. The Planning Commission will play a major role in the public review of the draft Ukiah Valley Area Plan and the EIR, holding at least one and possibly two public hearings prior to the board. So, you know, if you get asked questions about the role of the Planning Commission with regard to UVAP, they, they definitely have been updated all the way along the way, and they will be part of the, the grand, grand finale as we move into the public hearings. Um, there's also a question around revenue sharing uh, agreement with the city of Ukiah. Um, as you know, there's a great deal of preparatory work that needs to be done before specifics can be negotiated. But I wanted to let you know that developing a revenue sharing agreement with the city of Ukiah will be a recommended implementation measure in the Ukiah Valley Area Plan, and so that's how, how that ties together. Um, another question I had to why, do. Why is, why is that assumed that that'll be a recommendation in the, in the Ukiah Valley Area Plan? Because I happen to know that it's in the draft that would be coming forward. So it's a recommendation. You know, it be, will be up to where the is, public and the where board Where is this recommendation review. coming from? It's, it's part of the draft Ukiah Valley Area Plan that will be available. Who made the recommendation, though? You say this recommendation is I would forward. say that it's, it would be coming from the, uh, from the input that has been